I don't know why I chose to be a cannabis content creator, honestly. Why did I do this? Wait, is this what podcasting is like? It's cold, yeah. This is very uh, Canadian of us to be. Well, is it raining or snowing? I it's hail! It's, about yeah. hail. Yeah. it's like sleeting or something. I literally just woke up to a bunch of videos getting flagged on Instagram. I'm not shocked by any means, but I'm just so fucking tired of it because it's starting to actually make no sense now. Some of them didn't even show consumption, but I was wearing a bikini and it got flagged for nudity. I'm pretty sure I've seen people wear bikinis on Instagram and get millions of views. And also I had another video taken down where I didn't even show the plant in any way. I'm simply drinking a beverage and I was just comparing it to how I don't drink alcohol anymore and I was just making a comparison about how it's normalized to get a drink with your coworkers after work but it's not okay to have the green and then that got flagged. I just find that anytime I compare alcohol against the plant, that content gets flagged and that's so sus to me. After so many years of putting plant content on the internet, I figured out what you need to do in order to exist on the platform, right? You censor everything, you don't ever say the word cannabis, you never type those words out, you always use emojis, you use cryptic letters and numbers to represent the words that you wanna say, you never talk about price, you never recommend, like yada yada yada, I know all those things. There's no logic anymore and it's just so frustrating not only for me, but also for the rest of the community who is also going through the same thing. I literally have anxiety because every morning I wake up, I check my account status on Instagram to make sure that I'm not shadow banned. <laughs> it's just so disheartening and it kind of just solidifies my decision about why I'm moving to YouTube and not to say that I'm not gonna post content on Instagram and TikTok anymore, but I'm gonna do it in a completely different way now. But it's just discouraging when you can't even like properly educate and talk about the plant. So I totally understand the policies on Instagram and TikTok and I understand why they don't allow for that de the depiction of plant content. I understand. I don't necessarily agree with it because it's double standard in my opinion with the world of alcohol and with other controversial topics on the internet. Why censoring myself? I can't even talk real anymore. Do you know what I mean? How can I talk about CB1 and CB2 and endocannabinoid if I can't say those words? It's like literally teaching science without using the scientific terms. Like, I'm like, why did I have to choose cannabis as a content creation topic? Yeah, no, but I think also like, that's your bigger, it's, it's been your thing, you know? I know. It's what I'm passionate about, but like, fuck. Oh it's such a gray, misunderstood market, you know? I'm gonna go for a walk. I feel like I, I, there's like sun right now. I just need to go out for a walk. Yeah. To decompress it. I want to cry, but I'm like, I kind of wanted to cry, but I'm kind of over now. You're doing all the right things. You're on the right path. These are just obstacles. You're, you're, you have the right formula to go along for them. I know. I know. You know, I think just keep growing other stuff too. Like your your recipes your like all of the, your websites stuff that's for sure important right like you're you need to sell those things so you just need, you need to buckle down safeguarding your website yeah it's day five of my tea break and i'm heading to a cannabis event <laughs> tell me how i'm gonna fucking do this like give me the willpower to not smoke a j with some fellow industry friends uh i'm definitely gonna take some of the joints home and you know i'll take a sniff i'll take a whiff but i won't be puffing i'm gonna stay strong um, but I don't know if I'm gonna get secondhand inhale. Like, could I get lifted from being around people if they're puffing? I don't know. We'll find out. So far, so good. Staying strong. Let's keep going with the tea break. Hey, Stephen, how's it going? Awesome it is event that you have here. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> what, what are you super excited about tonight? To foster the next generation of uh, 
cannabis professionals that look like me. Canadian cannabis, yeah. it's, it's young, but there's opportunities that are creating themselves. Yeah. And it should be diverse, and I think that's what it is. Like, that's what I feel here is like, once I stepped in, I felt community. Yes. Like, I felt the fucking energy, you know? People are here to feel comfortable yeah. where they might not feel comfortable elsewhere. Yeah. No, thank you. Thanks for this. I'm excited. Thank you. First day of my group tea break challenge with my community. I technically already started my tea breaks five, six days ago, but officially announced on Instagram subscriptions that I will be doing a group tolerance break where I'll be providing motivation, support, tips and tricks, and just kind of creating a community of people who are also doing the tolerance break together. And so far it's been pretty good. We are all being very vulnerable, setting intentions of what we want to achieve out of the tea break. I picked the worst time to take my tea break. I mean, I know I wanted to do it in March because I just got back from Thailand. I consumed a lot and I want to reset my tolerance because I've been doing cannabinista for some time now. I haven't taken a full extended break in a long time. I'm pretty anxious and pretty stressed lately because I've been planning this 420 event in Toronto, which is on top of my content creation work which is on top of all the admin stuff. And then I'm having a lot of life headaches too lately. It's not like like crippling me, but it's just like an extra layer of inconvenience that takes time. Let me show you. I don't know if you can tell, but there's water damage on here. You see that? That's water. And my dumbass did that because my Walla water bottle <laughs> spilled. This caused that. I do not want to pay for another MacBook and the repair is going to cost at least in the thousands. So got to figure that out. And then on top of that, my freaking condo refrigerator. I have to defrost it today, so I'm wasting all this food. I'm trying to get my friends to come over and help me eat as much as possible, but a lot of this is gonna go to waste, unfortunately. Well, I'll shoot you an invite for my 420 event uh, in, in April, if you're gonna be out in Toronto or anything like that. It's gonna be a- Not far, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, awesome. yeah, no, thanks for the time, Bob. Okay, we'll talk to you. 30 more minutes of meetings. First Friday night in Toronto in a long time, and I'm just at home cooking, waiting for my friends to come over and enjoy some food. My fridge is defrosting, my freezer is defrosting, so I had to take out all the food in my fridge. Oh, I just gotta cook all of this stuff or try to use as much as I can. Oh, I have Hokkaido scallops here too. Oh, coming. Yeah, see? Also has face tracking or like whatever. Wait, and the gimbal moves. Like you see how the gimbal's moving? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's one week into my tolerance break and it's been going well. And I'm actually surprised that I've been falling asleep like a baby lately. Like I haven't needed the plant to fall asleep at all. So now I'm like questioning, was it just maybe I never needed the plant to fall asleep and it was just a mental thing? Day six of my tea break and day two of the group tea break since it's March 2nd now. So for the month of March, I'm doing a group tolerance break with my Instagram subscribers where basically I'll be providing tips and tricks daily, share our experiences with the tolerance break, and I'm kind of just like a motivation support person during this time. One of the topics that I'm talking about today with the community is actually how when you're on your tolerance break, people tend to start dreaming again. And the reason why this happens is because THC specifically hinders the ability for us to enter our REM sleep. We're still able to get deep sleep Sleep. We know studies have shown that REM sleep can help with uh, memory processing, brain development, emotional processing, and things like that. However, on the flip side, when you are entering REM sleep, that is also when you are dreaming. And I don't know about you guys, but personally, I actually hate dreaming because almost always whenever I dream, I wake up feeling more tired and I don't feel as rested. When I do consume the plant and I sleep, I sleep throughout the whole thing and I don't wake up feeling anxious or anything about anything that I've dreamed about. I definitely do miss the plant. I definitely do want to consume, but it really feels like this is a way for me to kind of sit with my feelings and emotions and thoughts. But I will say a, a lot of the joy I did get was also from consuming the plant and having those fun experiences with my partner, with my friends. And, you know, there's a lot of value from that as well, um, mentally for my mental health, but we got a long way to go.
day 10 of my tolerance break and I'm gonna unbox some packages for my 420 event. Oh God, this is literally taking up all the real estate in my tiny ass condo. Oh God. Oh, oh Lord. I'm gonna be hosting one of the dopest 420 events of the year in Canada. It's going to be a night focused on mindful consumption, learning about different methods of consumption, connecting with the local Toronto plant community, and it's gonna be a fucking vibe. I've been putting my blood, sweat, tears into putting together this event for the community. There's gonna be flour, there's gonna be infused mocktails, there's going to be crazy activations, mini massages. I'm so freaking stoked. One of the things I'm really excited about my event is all the dope giveaways that I've managed to secure through my sponsors. At my last event, everyone left away with like $400 worth of goodie bags. And I gave away a thousand dollar vase. And I gave away a $500 infusion machine. I just gave a lot of free stuff away, but not junk, like stuff that people actually want. I don't like free shit when it's stuff that I don't use and it ends up being junk, cause that's just wasteful. I have a newfound appreciation for events and event planners because holy hell, it is not freaking easy. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah, a cookie student glass vase. One lucky person is gonna win this. <laughs> Think we got another one here. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, okay. Oh my days, oh my days. Fuck. Yes. So on 420, I'm giving away two student glasses to two lucky people that will be at my 420 event in Toronto. Make sure you subscribe to my newsletter so you don't miss out on those ticket sales. It's gonna be the dopest, baddest event of the freaking year. And I don't know about you guys, but 420 to me is like Christmas, maybe even better. I gotta store these babies somewhere. Oh, my cramps are so bad right now. I just started my first day of my period and Holy crap, you know when you're just like curled up like a freaking ball and you can't extend your legs? I wish I had like an eddy right now or something, like something to take away the pain. I don't usually get cramps, so it's really weird that this is happening. I'm literally bent over like, like my back is broken right now, but I'm just trying to prevent my cramps from hurting. Being on a tolerance break and also having your period sucks. What if I use topicals? Like, could I put topicals on my cramps? Does it still count as a tea break? What do you guys think? I mean, it definitely doesn't seep into the bloodstream and it's not like it's going into my liver and it's not going into my blood-brain barrier either. So technically I'm not gonna, I mean, yeah, it could work, couldn't it? I'm just gonna eat because that'll help me take my mind off of, my mind off of the pain. Holy. One of the things that I was so worried about with taking my tolerance break was that I wouldn't be able to fall asleep. So when I had to take my tolerance break, I was a little bit nervous. If you have trouble sleeping during your tolerance break, these are the things that help me get super sleepy when I'm on my tea break. First is drinking some chamomile or mint tea to just kind of ease into the night. I'll usually have it two to three hours before bedtime so I don't wake up in the middle of the night peeing my pants. I also take magnesium, which is great for muscle relaxation and getting me into that sleepy, relaxed state. I also try to avoid blue light two hours before bedtime and especially social media. And if I'm really struggling, I'll sometimes have this herbal tincture. It's basically made from passion flower and valerian root, and it kind of is the same effects as chamomile tea, where it gets you into that sleepy state. I sometimes also listen to Sam Harris's meditation podcast to fall asleep, or I also do some breathing exercise, like four seconds in, four seconds out, sometimes put my hand on my tummy and then my other hand on my heart and then kind of just drift away. Sleep hygiene is definitely something that's taken me a long time to master, but those are the things that have worked for me, and I'm able to fall asleep like a baby without the plant. I am going on a panel today. Okay, I, can't, I clearly cannot talk with this. Let, let, let me finish this and then I'll come back. The cannabis marketing PR agency has put together like a panel in the cannabis world, but focused um, on serving a women's audience. I'm gonna be talking on the brand marketing panel today, just talking about brand building, social media, all that fun stuff in the canna world. I like my little headband here. I'm going to another cannabis event where I can't consume, but it's gonna be okay. This is a business networking event. Probably wouldn't have consumed anyway because it's during the day. Oh! Now this is my drug of choice. I've been sleeping like four and a half hours lately, which is so not me because I'm used to sleeping eight hours. And ever since going full time with Cannabinista, it's definitely been more hours of work, but it's all fun stuff. And I think that's like the main difference is like, I'm actually enjoying what I'm doing now. So it doesn't feel like work. I just feel like I'm pursuing my dream and building my own brands. Sounds cheese as hell, but 
it is what it is. Originally, I was gonna do a blazer, an oversized blazer kind of look, and then my boyfriend was telling me, you're not in the corporate world anymore. Like, just be you, like wear fun colors, like wear a nice, like wear like a fuzzy sweater, like do whatever you want, be cannabinista. And I was like, huh, you're right. Full-time content creation is not for everybody and it looks very different depending on your industry and how big your audience is. It's been a crazy three months, but so far it's been worth it. I'm gonna tell you the most important things I've learned in the past few months from being a full-time content creator. If you think you're training your nine to five for less work, that is not true. I'm working way more than I ever have, but the good thing is, is that I'm actually enjoying the time that I'm working. Social media is always on, it never turns off, so your brain is always thinking. Like even in the shower, I'm sometimes thinking of content ideas, I'm thinking of brand ideas, I'm thinking of ways to scale my business. It takes a lot of time and effort and heavy lifting in the beginning to set up your foundation and it's gonna be really important in order to help you scale and not burn out. Making sure that every kind of thing you do for your content creation or business, it is systemized, it's got a process, and ideally you can automate as much as you can because that is gonna be the bottleneck of scaling. And that's kind of the part that I'm working to fix right now is how do I make myself more scalable so I can focus more on strategic growth. Content creation can be a hella lonely journey. So this might just only be me, but because I'm in, in such a niche industry, not only is it difficult for me to just like connect with other creators, but that's something I'm working on. I'm trying to connect with more people and build that network so that I can relate to other creators and we can kind of talk through the same struggles and whatnot. In terms of your friend group and your family, they're not necessarily gonna understand the struggles that you go through as a creator because it is such a new industry and there is really no one size fits all roadmap. Your mental health can get fucked. Of course, everyone has a different level of tolerance and different way of managing stress, but just being on the internet and allowing people to comment and enter your life and perceive you or judge you for who you are, even if you don't care and read those comments, they're still gonna be there and eventually you'll come across one or two and believe it or not, it's still gonna have some type of indirect impact on you because the fact that it's still being exposed to you, personally, it still makes an impact on me and I'd have to do a lot of work every day to kind of remind myself the, the positive and the things that I am doing good and not being bogged down by the negativity. And this might be a hot take, but I don't think you can just be a content creator doing brand partnerships. All these creators talk about building multiple streams of income and all that kind of stuff, which is totally true because you can't just rely on brand deals and affiliate income because eventually those products may change, dissipate, or your audience may not be purchasing those things. There'll be other competitors that are also using the same partnerships and brand deals as you. You really have to differentiate yourself and build out products and services that are unique to you where you're truly, truly, truly offering something that they cannot find anywhere else. But on the flip side, I think we also need to remember that there's room for everyone and just because someone has done something doesn't mean that you can't do it too. Okay, I am done. My makeup for the day, this is the look. Denim skirt, I'm gonna wear some boots with it. It's just a fun thing, you know? Like, I don't wanna be too serious because it's cannabis. Okay, what time do I gotta go? Oh, I'm early as hell. It's like, it's 8.40 right now and I don't have to be there until 10. I'm thinking of walking there. It's only a 30 minute walk, but my bag is so heavy and I don't, I get, shoulder pain. You know when you carry a tote bag and it's just like digging into your shoulder and you're like dying halfway and I don't want that to happen. Oh. Okay, we're being business women today. So we are at a panel or I'm going to be speaking on a panel today. Hopefully I don't trip up. Oh, right there. Um, I asked them if I was allowed to swear because you guys know I love swearing. So I love to express myself, but they said I could swear if I wanted to, just not at people obviously. Caitlin, my girl. What's up? Um, how's it going? How's the setup this morning? Honestly, a little chaotic, but it's beautiful. Nice, nice. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Lee, also known as the Cannabinista. Great to meet you all. Excited to connect after this and eat some food. <laughs> you with the Cannabinista have done something pretty spectacular in terms of being able to build an audience. What sort of advice do you have um, for brands looking to create 
community, even a, a fraction of the community that you've been able to build. Be authentic. I think that's like the strength of Cannabinista is that people see me as their friend. Um, I sesh with people on Instagram Live. I meet up with people in real life and we connect. What are you doing as the most engaged and successful platform um, for garnering audience? You still need to be on these platforms that we have a love-hate relationship with because that's your top of funnel, right? But really the, the, the million dollar process is how you convert those into your private channels. And that's through email newsletter, in-person communities, phone numbers, Reddit. Discord. We do hate Instagram and TikTok sometimes. They censor the shit out of a lot of stuff, but you need it, right? You got to play the game, funnel those consumers down to your private channels, and then you can directly talk to them without the bullshit at the top. Now I'm going to switch up uh, your last question here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, your event. The event is really focused around learning about um, the, the world of cannabis in Canada, celebrating cannabis culture. But at the core of it, it's creating a in-person community for people to actually meet other like-minded individuals, similar to this, right? Um, because people are hungry for that in-person connection experience. It's going to be one of the, the best cannabis events uh, in Canada for 420. Thanks for our next presentation. Dope event. It's a dope space. The food was actually good. You know when the food sucks? Yeah, no, this place is good. Busy day, we are headed now to the Chronic House to take some measurements for the house, double check things, do some content there so we can shoot some promo content. We're almost one month away from the 420 event, so let's grind time, it's gonna be a lot of work, but excited to check out the house and show Silvana because she hasn't really looked at the measurements yet and I need her expertise because I ain't good at that stuff. Justin said that it was gonna be, the cap max capacity is probably 400, but I want us to like, actually double check that. Let's uh, go to each room, shoot content, and then we'll map out exactly what brand is gonna be there and what we need and just go through all the meticulous details. And then I think I should make hourly announcements yeah. about starting low and going slow. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Quick and easy. Uh, it's Sunday fun day and I'm going to clean my glass today because this has been sitting in this dirty ass water for a long, long time. I even have some old flour in here. That's pretty gross. Cleaning the student glass is not one of my favorite things to do, but we got to do it. I have this thing called like a banger basket. Put all the pieces of the glass and fill it up with ISO. It's actually meant for like dabs and glass tools and stems and stuff. Let everything, all the little pieces soak in the ISO for a couple hours. Ugh. It like doesn't look so dirty, but it smells like ass. Oh my God. This is gonna take a long time, isn't it? I like to just like do the first one as like using my hands and then some ISO and to clean as much as I can. And this is why filters are so important because this stuff can go into your lungs, which you do not want. Oh, I can't handle this alcohol smell. Blech. Um, after the ISO, I like to put so oh! put a bit of soap. I just fill the soap and water and I just continue to just clean. Usually the glass will come with things like this like pipe cleaner looking thing. I just take the mouthpieces and then just clean it like you're cleaning a water bottle straw. This is a lot of work. This is why I don't use glass that often. <laughs> Too much cleaning. And then my hack for cleaning reservoir for the flour. After I soaking in ISO, it comes out really easily and I just poke to just get out all the nasty stuff. Line up all my pieces here. Just let it dry. These ones are gonna take a little bit longer. It's day 17 of my tolerance break, and honestly, it's going pretty well. 
I'm surprised, but I haven't really been having any negative symptoms. But the only thing I will say is that I miss drinking it. I miss eating it. I miss rolling it. I miss everything about it. Day 18 of my tea break and I just had the realization about my relationship with the plant and why it's been such a helpful tool for me. So it's literally almost midnight or it's it's past midnight now and normally I sleep around 10.30 p.m. And ever since my tea break has started, I've been sleeping at past midnight. It's not that I'm not able to fall asleep necessarily. It's that when I don't have the plant, I don't want to fall asleep. I'm tired though, like I'm yawning for sure, but my body or my mind just doesn't want to turn off the light and go to bed. Whereas when I normally consume the plant, I get I get pretty sleepy by 10, 30, 11 ish, where I'm like excited to go to bed. I'm like, cool, getting REM sleep and I'm falling asleep quote unquote naturally, but I'm getting way less sleep on my tolerance break. So I guess I'm kind of torn whether or not actually being on this tea break is good for me or not because being on this tolerance break probably hasn't been as great for my mental and my physical health as much as I thought it would be. And I know there's going to be people that say, oh, it's withdrawals and whatnot, but I really don't think it is because my tolerance was already low to begin with. I guess I'm just thinking a lot about the benefits that the plan has had on my life. I mean, everyone's situation is different. I am someone that is constantly thinking, very anxious and always thinking about my to-do list and how I can, you know, output more and all of that. So having the plant kind of helps me be more slow in a, but in a good way. Like when I consume the plant, it's, I'm not so much focused on producing an outcome and then my next to-do list. I'm, I'm more so focused on the present and mindful and allowing my body to just be, I guess I kind of miss that.